check it out. Oh no. Good morning. Can I please have a large double double? That everything? That would be. Thank you. 210? Thanks. All right, we got our coffee. We are on our way up to Bracebridge, Muskoka, Ontario, Canada. That's a long one. To go to the Fire and Ice Festival. I believe this is our second or third year. Uh, they bring in like 70 truckloads of snow and turn their main street into a huge tube slide. They've got skating, they've got food. Uh, I saw them last in, in one of the videos, they are putting uh, syrup, uh, maple syrup on snow and turning it into taffy and putting it on a stick. So we're gonna try that. We're gonna try a bunch of things there. Uh, I brought my drone, I brought my good camera, I brought my gimbal, my Zion Crane 2, and we're gonna have a lot of fun. Unfortunately, uh, Carol's uh, on a woman's retreat doing scrapbooking and both my kids are working today so it's, a, it's supposed to be a family event but I needed I missed it last year I really wanted to show it to you guys this year so let's head up to Bracebridge to the fire and ice festival let's go Hello, made it to Bracebridge, uh, parked down by the falls, and uh, I launched my drone, got some wicked shots of the falls, of the bridge, went along the top of the buildings, and then I lost signal because of this building right here. And unfortunately, because I had it in sport mode, the last time I flew it was at Carol's parents cottage and I had it in sport mode didn't notice that it was still on sport mode and unfortunately it just left as soon as it lost signal it just the wind just took it and it just it's gone so this is pretty much the most expensive shoot I've ever done and uh, the whole time I thought I was gonna get it back I thought it was gonna come back and I'm waiting I'm waiting I'm waiting for it to come back now the winds blowing on my mic right now how depressing is that? You go to go and do a really cool shoot and you lose $2,000. Actually, it's like $2,500. Silly wind. Stop the wind. Uh, so I'm going to try and make the best out of this situation. And uh, like I ran. <laughs> I ran from here all the way up to the top of the hill in, in uh, Bracebridge here to try and reconnect my signal. And I, I probably should have gotten in the car, but I was afraid that it would come back. Like, it's supposed to come back. But when it's in sport mode, the GPS thing's off, and the biggest mistake ever flying a drone in this situation. I've flown here before many times, but again, I had it in, in the GPS mode. And, oh man. Oh well, let's try and make the best out of the rest of the day. So this is me making the best of doing the Fire and Ice Festival in Bracebridge. Just gonna look around, see what they got. Visit Muskoka Bearware. Although Mark, Mark is not here, but uh, he sent me an email saying he's off with his family today. First time they've missed the festival. <laughs> but uh, hopefully we have a good time. I'm definitely gonna go down the tube run. I'm not sure if I'm going to take this down or not. Might shoot with my action cam instead. 
Alright, let's check this place out. As you can see, the two bride line is crazy long, but I came all this way, lost a drone. I have to do the two bride. Let's go. was about 45 minutes to an hour around that so let's do the walk of fame hello hello oh, wow. oh yeah you got the heavy machinery with you we're trying right i do two cameras though Okay, you guys got to hold me. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> we got the two. Thank you very much. Sit down. Oh yeah, that, oh, well. that'll work. In or no? Uh, I think just straight would be straight. Would be great. We just gotta wait till that guy starts sure. unloading, man. Thank Whoa. you. <laughs> Hope I don't hit my head. Check it out. Oh no. <laughs> That's fun. I think I'm gonna make it to the end. <laughs> we made it. All the way. Nice. Awesome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, that was fun. All right, guys, I was walking by, met these gentlemen. I met this gentleman last year, uh, last summer, yeah, and we were at the station house. And what's your name again? Dylan. Dylan. They call me Dino. <laughs> Dano? Dino. Dino. Yeah. Hey, Dino. <laughs> and these two new guys, what's your name? I'm Ryan. Devin. Oh. Devin. 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 And Ryan. It was nice meeting you guys. Yes, nice meeting you. you. Thanks for volunteering. Yes. Giving your time to the, the town. Yeah. yeah. Oh, That's awesome. Here. Lovely so day. Back to our Did you guys get some? Some uh, rides down or not? Uh, I don't no, yeah. wait in that lineup. Yeah, yeah no, it took me line. took me just about an hour to do the whole cycle, Ooh, from start oh, wow. starting on the top of the hill down up and then come back oh, down. No way. About an hour. Was it worth it though? Yeah, it was fun. It was awesome. fun. It'll be good footage for the vlog. Oh Perfect. yeah, good. And if you see my vlog, I mean, if you see my drone, drone yeah. let me know. We yeah. will. Sure. Okay, guys, nice meeting you. See ya. See ya. <laughs> awesome. Awesome people here in Bracebridge. Gotta let them cool down a bit so they don't drip. No kidding. How does that look? Doesn't that look good? That's great. It's the oldest known dessert in Canada, tapion snow. Oh yeah. In the olden days, uh, the natives used to use just twigs, oh, and, okay. and would roll it just like this, just in a snowbank. They didn't have a fancy trough or fancy popsicle sticks. You guys perfected it. Well, <laughs> just a little change. I don't know if it's better or not, but. This is Sugarbush Tom, and he's offering me one of the, the candies here. A the freebie from Sugarbush Hill Maple Farm. Thank there you very much, sir. You're welcome. Enjoy. Oh. Mm. Oh, man. I had to do some extra laps today. That was beautiful. Thanks, Tom. No way. You don't have to 
Mm -hmm. Let's move on. Well, it's time for a snack and beaver tail. That's where it's at. Let's do it. Hello. Hi. I'd like to try the number eight chocolate banana chocolate, please. Banana chocolate. Yes, sir. Is it? Yeah. Ken. Wow. <laughs> you ordered one. I ordered one. It's a banana song, so. Oh, is it? They go, oh, they go okay. bananas over. They go bananas over the banana one. What's okay. Your first thing? Ken. Ken? Yeah. Thank you. Have a great day. Oh, There's a bunch Check of people. This is actually the first uh, chocolate and banana beaver tail I've ever eaten. I've had other banana. Oh, look at that. It broke through. I've got a hole in my beaver tail. Oh my gosh, check that out, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, I lost a banana. Mm. It's like a donut. Mm. Like a donut, but they make it flat, like a beaver tail. Put chocolate on it, fry Nutella, and then, oh, almost lost that one. It's falling apart. Extra crispy. Mm. Extra greasy on a day like this. Extra walking for me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get more napkins, man. Holy cow, they're done. I'm gonna finish this off and then go check out what else Bracebridge has to offer. Yummy. gentlemen that was the fire and ice festival Bracebridge Ontario and uh, it was great definitely would have been super awesome if Carol and the kids could have come by and uh, experienced that with me the tube the tube ride was good I'm not sure if it was worth the wait for uh, almost an hour about 45 minutes for the wait and then you have to walk all the way back up and then wait for your turn to get on the hill so uh, I think round trip is like 55 just under an hour which was fine and again again it was all about the vlog <laughs> for that if I had come here on a normal day not vlogging I probably wouldn't have done the slide unless I had kids I definitely do it when I had kids uh, I didn't because I have to drive home I'm not gonna go to the beer tent uh, they also had like hot butter rum and all these other adulty type things that I would like to have tried, but uh, I don't have a 
designated driver. What I'm gonna do right now, I've got about an hour before I should really head out and I am going to actually turn on the controller, see if there's any settings on there where I could possibly find the drone. If, it, if I do find it, it'll be epic. But I have uh, like just so many forests around here, people's backyards, houses. I could have landed on top of a house. I don't know what it would do once it runs out of battery, except just there, there's got to be something in it, even in sport mode, where it won't just like stop working and fall. It should just lower itself down as a safety measure. Anyway, let's go. Holy cow! I'm just south of Barry, and the guy in front of me just went across three lanes of traffic and smashed the wall. Oh, it was a woman, and she, it was almost like she had fallen asleep because, and I could see her going towards the wall. Oh my gosh. She's so lucky because she was like losing control. She hit it so hard. She's like destroyed the right side of a car for sure. There's debris. I had to drive over debris. I, and I was back far enough that I could see her going, going, going. Boom! I feel sorry for her. Now, I don't feel as bad about losing my drone because she's probably done about $4,000 and up of damage to her van. Didn't look like she had any kids in the car, but it looked like she was coming maybe home from skiing because she had like one of those roof rack things for skis. So she looked like she was okay. She drove for a bit straight and then she slowed and pulled over and stopped. So, wow, what a day, what a day, crazy. Um, I'm not sure the last time I turned the camera on, but I went to, uh, in the direction in which I last saw the drone fly. Again, guys, it was 100% my fault. Uh, the last time I flew it at the cottage, I think, and this is why, I'm not sure if I ever told you either, that on the vlog channel, on my last vlog, I said there's something weird with the drone when it took off, it kind of went all by itself. And at that point in time, I didn't realize the last time I flew it, I had it on sport mode. When you have it on sport mode, it shuts off all the GPS stuff. So when it's on sport mode, it's global positioning. So it positions itself, triangulates where it is and it stays in that spot when you're not flying it. And uh, today it was on sport mode, GPS is off. Once it lost contact with me, the wind just took it. And then it had like 35% power. Again, I hope I'm not repeating this from the last time I talked to you guys, but it was, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> crazy days. Let's go home. <laughs>